retrograde. So this week in drama, we are studying silent films. Um, now, this can be done in two different ways. Okay, so there's your performance option and your non-performance option. Um, so we're going to start with the performance option. Um, so like we saw on Monday, we were talking um, about the history of silent films um, and how those are created um, and kind of the how that came to be. Okay, so in that spirit, we're going to be creating our own silent films. Now, you can do this um, by yourself, so you can create a silent film on your own. Um, you can also enlist your family members um, as your characters. Um, I would like to try and limit it to three group members if possible. Okay. Um, you can also work with your classmates. And that's the wonderful thing about breakout rooms in Zoom. So you and your um, group members can be sent off to a room to work, um, and then you guys can plan and talk freely without the fear of talking in front of the rest of the class. Okay. Um, so, your silent films have to tell a complete story, so beginning, middle, end, okay? And your acting should be over dramatic and way overdone, okay? So, if I'm going to um, write something down, okay, instead of just being like, like I normally would, right? I would. So, um, so anyway, what should your story be about? Good question. Um, so I've given you a couple of ideas, okay? So like a crime drama, okay? Um, so it could be like a who done it, like who stole the cookies from the cookie jar, right? Um, could be, you know, um, who left their dirty socks on my bed or I don't know, whatever. Um, and then it could also be this kind of slapstick comedy. So, you know, you want to think like, um, like cartoon type things, like Tom and Jerry kind of things, like boof, oh, like this way overacted type of comedy. Okay, somebody gets hit on the head with a um, a frying pan, right? They fall. You know, that kind of a slapstick comedy. Okay. Um, yours could be a scary movie if you want it to be. Um, and then here's some other ideas. So justice, rite of passage, um, like something that everybody goes through. Okay. Or it could be a um, self-improvement, like a self-discovery type thing, a personal thing. So I've provided you um, on the uh, overview paper um, some examples from some other films that other students around your age have created. Okay. So if you want to take a look at those, you can. Um, and then I've also included how you're going to be graded. Okay. So your script is part of the grade. So complete sentence, you work together as a group. Um, and then the filming and the performance of it, your characterization, how exaggerated were you with the physical delivery, with your emotions, your facial expressions. Okay. Um, did you use costumes? Did you use props? Um, so again, this is different than pantomime, right? So I could pretend to use a pen, right? But for this, it's better to actually have the pen, okay? Um, and then your appropriate setting, okay? So, you know, you can kind of modify things um, in your house, your backyard, or whatever um, to kind of fit your needs. Um, sheets are wonderful. Like, you know, this is, I'm in my dining room right now, but this is just in the background. And then we've got you know, curtain. So you can kind of, um, for film, you know, make it, make it make sense. Make it work, right? As um, Tim Gunn always said on Project Runway, make it work. Anyway, uh, so then in the editing process, okay, because this will be something that needs to be edited. Okay, so you're probably going to need to use something a little bit more sophisticated um, than uh, Flipgrid. Okay, so we video is a really easy free program online. Um, I use iMovie personally, um, but I just I had access to a Mac a long time ago, and that's just what I started using and what I'm used to. So, um, so in the editing process, you're going to be putting your clips together, okay? But you're also going to be adding some text boxes, okay? These are called intertextiles, and um, Basically, what they do is they help um, the audience make sense of the action. Okay, so it gives them 
just enough stuff that they can understand what's going on. So for instance, um, if I was going to do a silent film of the three little pigs, probably something that would be really important for the audience to hear and for them to, well, not hear, but to read in the text box um, would be the, um, and I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. You know, and the, then the pig saying, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. You know, so those, those lines are so classic that immediately if people saw that, they'd be like, oh, that's the three little pigs. Even if, you know, they weren't quite getting that from your film at that point. Um, so we talked about uh, on Monday in the presentation that music is really important. So there's tons of silent film type music um, on YouTube. Um, so I'm happy to provide you with um, some um, links if you feel like you need it. But it's it you know you can find what you want and the type of um, you know do you want kind of some scary do you want some happy music you know so um, and you want it to match what's going on in the in the story. Okay, so you might end up needing to try and use several different types of music. Okay, and then special effects. All right, so um, there is some planning that needs to go into this. Um, you can't just like start filming, right? So what you're going to do is you are going to go through and um, you're going to plan with your group. Okay, here's what we're going to, um, here's what ours is going to be about. Okay, here's what the conflict is, here are the characters, here's what's going to happen, here's where it's going to be set. Okay, um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to outline it. Okay, and this is your script. Okay, so you are, um, you're going to be writing a couple of lines for those inner textiles, right? Um, inner titles, text inner titles um, or text boxes, okay? But you only really should have, for your two to three minute, you should maybe have four or five text boxes, maybe. Um, so what you're doing on that outline is you're really writing out um, the action. So like, here's what happens um, in our film, okay? And so I gave you an example, okay, that says like, Mrs. Whitaker slowly opens the door and peers around. The kids are asleep in bed. She closes the door and sighs. She looks tired from a long day. She begins to walk away from the door when she steps on a Lego. She hops on one foot, and then there's a text box that says, Yow! A <laughs> bunch of characters. Um, then Mrs. Whitaker claps her hand over her mouth, okay, realizing that she might wake the kids if she, you know, she made a loud noise, okay? And then she cups her hair to ear to listen. And satisfied, she begins to walk downstairs when all of a sudden, Mom! Text box comes up, okay? <sighs> Face palm, okay? So that's my example of a 30-second film outline, okay? So yours, you know, even though that, is short, there still is a beginning, a middle, and an end. There's the conflict, right, of stepping on the Lego, oh my gosh, we're gonna wake up the kids, okay, and then the conclusion, the resolution, right, of, oh no, I've gotta go try and get them to go back to sleep again, okay, so that's the ending. So for yours, again, you're gonna be outlining the beginning, the middle, and the end. Now, there are bullet points on my template you don't have to use every bullet point, but you can't summarize it in one sentence each. Okay, so it needs to be a lot more detailed than just, you know, um, eight cookies, broke cookie jar, ran off. Okay, that's not going to tell somebody what is going to happen in your film, right? And again, two minutes is a little bit longer than you think, right? Um, but once you start writing, once you start thinking about exactly I need to open the door and then I need to quietly walk in and then I need to peer around and then, whew, and then, you know, so again, you are, um, you're writing out what happens in your film. 
Now this can be done together, okay? So if I'm in a group with somebody else, okay, we can say, okay, we're gonna write on Mrs. Whitaker's and I'm gonna share it with my partner, okay? And then we would turn that in and then if both our names are on it, then we both will get credit for it, just like you would in, in class, okay? But remember that when things are digital, I can see who has typed when, right? So I can tell if, you know, the one group member did all of the work and the other person did like hardly anything okay so not that it has to be completely equal but you know we you don't want to be that person that is bringing down your group okay all right so then once you are done with planning yours then you want to start filming okay and the filming process of this um, again it's going to be a little bit different since we're virtual um, and so um, you're going to kind of have to figure out backgrounds that are similar um, or, you know, how your characters are. Somebody um, last year, um, actually, I think, I think they were sixth graders. Um, I don't know, maybe they were seventh graders. Well, anyway, um, they did a film where one person um, was on one side of the door, like talking to the person in the other room, and the other person was in the other room answering them. Um, and but they were at two different houses and they just filmed themselves um, on zoom doing that and then they kind of edited it together so you know you can be in two different locations and make it seem like you're in the same place so it is possible it just takes a little bit of creative thinking so um, yeah I'm excited to see these all right for the non-performance option this week um, you will be watching eight crash course film history videos okay and I have those listed um, I have those listed here um, and what you're going to be doing with those is as you watch you're going to be thinking of five to seven questions that if you were the teacher what you would want to ask students um, about this um, this video okay you need to include what the answer is to the question okay um, and you need to make sure that when you go through it, okay, that your grammar is correct, you have proper capitalizations, you don't have any misspelled words. So remember, we've been talking about that red squiggly line that shows up under things. Okay, you need to click that so that it will help you fix those grammar mistakes. Okay, you can also, under tools, okay, you can say, you can go to like spelling and grammar and it can, um, you can have it check and run through your thing. So it'll help you, okay? Um, so if you separate it, okay, into the four days that we have in class, so Tuesday, and then, you know, you could do two on Wednesday during asynchronous day, and then Thursday and Friday. So you would be able to do two each day, okay? So that's 20 minutes of video, and then 20 minutes that you are, um, that you're thinking of questions, okay? So it's possible to get this all done in class. Okay, so that is the non-performance option.